everyone. Welcome to the Wicked Ones podcast. This is Tara. And this is Jen. And again, it's been a while. I need to know what you've been up to. It's been another whole week. Yeah. Oh. It's Tuesday. Oh, actually, it's Monday. It's Monday. Yeah. We switched it up this week. Fun day, Monday. Yeah, I love it. It's great. And like I said, it's my new Friday. Uh, not a whole lot. I, uh, spending a little bit more time on social media lately, trying to, uh, Get to know our true crime people. Yeah, yeah. And I can't say that I've enjoyed it, unfortunately. I mean, the true crime people, that's been great. But I've come across some less than... Uh, less than stellar posts? Uh, yeah, you uh. know, people are they're angry right now. Or maybe it's all the time. I don't know. But uh, it led me to a public service announcement. So I'm going to... Really? <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to take this opportunity to give everyone a public service annou- announcement. We need to stop using social media as a method to publicly shame people. Ugh, amen to that. Yep. It is not cool. You are a bully. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. Tell me what you ran across. So I came across several things that were very disturbing. I came across a picture of a... Someone had videoed a drunk male at a bar and just put on there, like, buddy, you need to go home. And a video. That's awful. He had no idea. His head was down. He had no idea anyone was videoing him. You know what? You don't video someone like that. You call them a cab. You do. You don't know his story. You don't know what he's going through at the moment. Maybe he lost his job. Maybe his mom has cancer. Maybe he's going through a divorce or he lost a child. Or maybe he's a raging alcoholic. I don't know. But you don't video him and put him on social media for people to poke fun at him without him knowing. No. No. That's not okay. No. And then I saw something about, you know, someone posted a picture of someone who parked, you know, took up two parking spots and... Another one about someone needs to tell this lady about her pants or... But all of these pictures were taken without the other person's consent and then put on social media being made fun of. And you... you, They're not the asshole. It's you posting that. That is... Sorry. 100%. No, absolutely. Makes me very angry. Although... and not to not to make fun of you, and I'm not making fun of you, but I was waiting for you to say they were part cattywampus. I <laughs> oh, love you, it when I you use them. I use all these old lady <laughs> words, all oh, parked all cattywampus, and sassafras, it. and yeah, yeah, I was waiting for that to come out. No, yeah. but I'm like I think of my grandma. My grandma, I can guarantee you, when she goes to the grocery store, who bless her heart, she still goes, and I just picture this person who's parked, taking up two parking spots. Maybe they have to get their old grandpa out the other side with a walker you don't know someone else's story the nerve that you have to post these people's pictures without their consent is it just makes my blood boil Mm. no it really and it really brings it makes me think of our kids and you know they're probably 10 times worse sharing pictures tweeting this uh there's what, no consequence. The There's no. no person having an opportunity on the other side to defend themselves. So it's so much easier just to post a picture and laugh and poke fun. What if you had to do that to the person's face or the, the person's no. family member? Then it's a whole different game. Mm-mm. So I was very uh, excited to kind of jump back into social media because I'm not a huge fan. And I'm going to keep at it. I'm Good for you. It. I'm trying to. Um, I... But that's my... That's my public announcement please stop stop taking pictures and video of people when they don't know about it and putting it on social media for people to be be made fun of yeah 100 percent agree with you on that no and i probably need to get on social media more because i think i just said tweet and they don't even put pictures up hardly <laughs> on twitter but you know what i'm saying I what's do. the one yeah. that i never use snapchat yeah. things like that. and is that oh. even cool anymore still i probably is. tiktok probably snapchat is. See, I'm now I'm dating myself. I just no, feel very but old. It, it gave me no I have no eagerness to dive into another world of social media after that. Mm-hmm. I was sad. I was sad. And these were grown adults doing it. If they yeah. weren't teenagers. Well they're not. And, and they they're thought not they, they thought they were funny. Yeah. Well they're not setting a good example. But either. I didn't comment. I took it every I'm ounce proud of me. Of you. I'm proud not of you. to get into that. I did not. I just scrolled past. 
Looking for the puppies and kittens. And yeah. the newborn babies and the happy birthday wishes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, end of my rant. Um, anything that... Uh... No, nothing much going on. We're just thinking about Halloween, trying to figure out what we're doing. Um, but I am excited about this month and November and the theme that we decided to go with serial killers because yeah. so november is the favored month of birthdays for serial killers which is interesting and did you dive into that a little bit do you know why they you know there was no real answer they gave a couple of like sun moon and stars astrology mm-hmm. which is what you would expect i mean but there was no true thing it's really crazy so when i looked into the stats it's true there's more serial killers Born in the month of November than any other month. With no true explanation. Right. Well, and I mean, really to think about it, what would the explanation be? I mean, who's going to... True. It's true. kind of all, you know, all that woo-woo, you know. Yeah. And one day I might get into that a little bit more. But when I was reading it and the sun and the moon and the star, I mm-hmm. couldn't... I, I just couldn't appreciate it at this point. No, because I don't know anything about it. It would be kind of cool to learn. Maybe yeah, go it would be. There's a lot of... I think that people follow Mm -hmm. the moon or the sun. I don't know which one. That's insulting in itself. But I do believe that it does have an effect on your mood and... I mean, yeah. All of those things. So the one thing we can dig into when I get that extra time when the kids move out and I retire. We'll put it on the bucket list. (laughs) (laughs) So what do you have for us then starting off our serial killer month? All right. So today I'm going to tell you about Nanny Doss. Okay. Have you heard of Nanny? I have, but now I I can't put, I can't remember exactly what she's famous for. Okay. So Nanny, a.k.a. the Giggling Granny, oh. the Jolly Black Widow, the Lonely Hearts Killer. Do you remember? I do. I know a little bit about it. A little bit. But I, I'm interested to hear because I don't know enough. Yeah. She was active between 1927 and 1954. So, between the ages of 22 and 49. Oh, okay. That's a long time. That is a really long time. She's a full, this lady, she's full out, full out serial killer. Wow. It, it reminds me a little bit of Belle. Remember when I was telling you about Belle Gunness? A little bit, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Nanny Doss is born Nancy Hazel on November 4th, 1905 in Blue Mountain, Alabama to parents Louisa and James Hazel. She was one of five, one brother, and three sisters. Unfortunately, Nanny had a terrible childhood. Mm. Everyone in the family disliked her father, James. He was controlling, and he didn't allow the children to go to school, but insisted they work on the family farm. And this resulted in all the children being illiterate. That's awful. That's too bad. Was that common maybe back then, though? It was very common Mm because they needed your help on the farm. Yeah. It was one or the other. And I believe I read just a small part where it said that at one point Nanny tried to go back to school, but she was so far behind she ended up just dropping out entirely by sixth grade. Well, that has to be intimidating when you can't read. You're very... How do you catch up? Yeah, so it's sad. Hmm. Uh, A little bit more about Nanny's childhood. At the age of seven, she suffered a traumatic head injury. Her family took a trip to visit relatives in southern Alabama. She was super excited. This was her first trip anywhere. But she hit her head on a metal bar on the seat in front of her when the train stopped suddenly. Nanny complained of depression, headaches, and blackouts due to this injury. So this is not the first serial killer no. we've heard. No, I was going to say this isn't. You actually hear that quite a bit you with do. serial killers that they had some kind of traumatic head trauma. But we know plenty of people who have had head trauma who don't turn out to be a serial killer. So Absolutely. She didn't have a whole lot going on in her younger years. Her only real interest was reading her mother's romance books and magazines. She especially loved the Lonely Hearts column. And dreaming of her own Romeo. So that's the paper version of Match.com, right? Yeah. You list your yeah. ad of who you are and what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. And I can see it too. You know, if you have such a horrible upbringing and, and childhood and you feel you just want to get out of there. It's like that whole, you know, Cinderella syndrome or story where you just, you're dreaming about better places. And 
some wonderful Romeo to come sweep you away from your evil father. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what it was. She was obsessed with romance and love and heroes. Mm -hmm. I could see it. Her father didn't allow her or her sisters to date. They couldn't wear makeup, no attractive clothes, no parties. This was hard on Nanny and her sisters. They it's despised rough. the strict rules. He felt he was keeping them safe from the men. But despite this, Nanny and her sisters were molested on multiple occasions. And I couldn't find I couldn't find any other no. details about this. It really just said town men. So I'm I'm not sure how that happened. It, and they worked on the farm. They were pretty much home all the time. They weren't allowed to go out. Where when was this happening? I there was some it's and bits and vague parts about them maybe possibly sneaking out at times or inviting uh, okay. certain okay. ones to the barn. But everything was so yeah gray. There was right. no real true... I never felt like I heard one specific story over and over enough to give it a valid point. Fair enough. It's just it's one of those things where, okay, well, you want to keep your kids safe and keep them away from all of these things and... The temptation, but then really, if they're the ones sneaking out because they just can't handle not being, then they're putting themselves in, in more danger. situations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, um, I'm going to talk about Nanny's first husband. There's many. In 1921, at the age of 15, baby, Okay. Nanny married Charlie Braggs after knowing him and working with him at a linen factory for five months. Fifteen. For five months. Okay. Yeah. Baby. And this was with her father's approval. I don't know if this was maybe like the one less mouth to feed on the farm kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, it doesn't say why he approved. All of a sudden it's okay to get married, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, So she moved in with Braggs and his unmarried mother, who unfortunately really just took the place of her father's controlling ways. Her mother-in-law was controlling, manipulative, and high-maintenance, and she really just didn't like Nanny. So just one bad situation to the next. Absolutely. They had their first child in 1923, and then three more children in three years. Wow, okay. Four kids in four years. That can... That's rough, too. So, I mean, she's 19, 20. Yeah. With four kids. I can't even imagine. They became a huge family really, really fast. Nanny becomes depressed and unhappy in her marriage. Briggs is a drunk and a cheater, and he's abusive. If you can't beat him, join him. She starts drinking and cheating as well. Ah, okay. You see that, too. Things are not going well. In 1927, after the birth of their fourth child... Their middle two children fall ill and die suddenly. Oh, this isn't... Okay, keep going. This isn't the story you thought it was. Oh. But it's lighthearted, like I promised, but not that lighthearted. So the doctors call it food poisoning, but this happens all in one day. So Braggs leaves for work in the morning. He comes home. The kids are writhing in pain on the floor, and they die. I'm thinking postpartum depression. I was just going to, yeah, I was going to say that earlier when you told me four that quickly. I thought, wow, okay. So Braggs, he genuinely suspected that Nanny poisoned them. Yeah, I would too. He told others he didn't eat or drink anything she cooked when she was in a bad mood. Okay. So he obviously felt very strongly about that. (laughs) And he takes the oldest child, Melvina, and leaves the newborn, Nanny, and his mother behind. His mom. So he left. Like, he left. left. He like, took the oldest and he left. Okay. Peaced out. Okay. His mother passes shortly after he leaves. Mm-hmm. Of course she did. Mm-hmm. Nanny stays at the house until Braggs returns a year later with Melvina and his new girlfriend. To live? No. He, I mean, I think he was like, okay, we're back. You need to go now. So they divorce in 1928. And Nanny left to stay with her mom with her two living children. 
So apparently he didn't think she poisoned them anymore. I'm not sure. So he came back and the baby was alive. Once the new girlfriend was in the picture, he was probably just, all right, time for a new family. Uh, That's awful. That is awful. So their marriage lasted eight years, and he is forever known as the husband who got away. He is the only one of Nanny's husbands to outlive their marriage. Okay, okay. I see where this is going. So, here our victim's list is two kids and one mother-in-law. Her second husband. So, quickly she returned to reading the Lonely Hearts column and began corresponding romantic letters with 24-year-old Robert Harrelson. And how old is she at the time again? 1920... So she's 29, she was 15 in 1921, so she's 21. Okay. Okay, not very old. I just didn't know if he was quite a bit older than her, I'm trying to place. No. Okay. Um, So they marry in 1929, shortly after meeting, and they reside in Jacksonville, Alabama, with Nanny's two daughters. But it didn't take long for Nanny to realize that Harrelson wasn't that night and shine armor. He was an alcoholic with a history of criminal assault and favored the good old bar fight. The, ma- the marriage did manage to last for 16 years. Oh, That's a wow. long time. That is a long time. Harrelson was a partier, and in 1945, Japan surrendered to the Allied powers at the end of World War II. He celebrated with a night of heavy drinking and returned home to rape Nanny. Oh, another spousal mm-hmm. rape story. I feel like these are not as common, and now we got two in a row. The next day, she came across Harrelson's corn whiskey jar in her flower bed and decided to add a little rat poison. Oh. He died the same night. So murder's never okay. Never okay. In this nope. story, you can almost add a little compassion. You can. I mean, and I, when you said this and we got we got into the story and as soon as you mentioned the kids and, you know, the, the food poisoning incident, it just, I was expecting there to be poison involved. It seems like a woman's MO oh, yeah. mostly, correct, mm-hmm. right? For sure, because they, they don't, don't like to get messy. No. Uh, unfortunately, things get worse. So during the time that Nanny... Um, is married to Harrelson, she becomes a grandmother. And Nanny's older daughter, Melvina, has two children, first a boy in 1943 named Robert, Robert Haynes, and then a girl in 1945 who only, she only lasts hours, and she oh. dies almost immediately after birth. Nanny came to help her daughter, Melvina, during the labor of her own daughter, It was a hard labor, and she was given meds, which made her groggy and confused. Shortly after the baby girl was born, Melvina thought she saw Nanny stick a hat pin into the baby's head. Oh my gosh. Okay. So she tells, Melvina tells this to her younger sister and her husband, but they have no explanation for Melvina's story. Nanny had simply told them about the baby's death. But they do admit to seeing Nanny playing with a hat pin, rolling it in her fingers that day. But they didn't notice anything on the baby? Doctors had no explanation for the newborn's death. Okay. And Melvina never spoke of it again. Okay. Now, were they all living with her? Was she thinking... Like you were saying earlier, one I don't believe so. Maybe, or... maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I, don't I know. just, I can't understand why she would do that. No, I, it's a weird, I don't know. Melvina and her husband split after losing their second child. And she begins to date a soldier who Nanny does not like. So Melvina and her mom get into a fight and her mom goes to stay with her dad just to visit. And she leaves her grandson Or she leaves her son, Robert, with his grandmother. Okay. Robert dies under Nanny's care on July 7th, 1945. What happened? 
the cause of death was diagnosed as asphyxia from unknown causes. From unknown causes, and this woman has some serious history going on. But nobody knows of the nobody's... history. Okay. Nobody knows of the history at this point. So, and Nanny played the role up as the grieving grandmother at the funeral, crying and wailing. But two months later, without anyone knowing, she collected the five hundred dollar life insurance policy that she had taken out on Robert. Oh. oh. So now we're at two kids, okay. one mother-in-law, one husband, and two grandkids. Husband number three. Okay. Nanny returns to the Lonely Hearts column for her next husband. She marries Arlie Lanning in Lexington, North Carolina, after knowing each other for only days. Nanny was a romantic. Well, what's his excuse? I think they are too. She kind of like, from what it sounds like, she kind of has like the suckers. Like she puts herself out in these lonely hearts comments. So as these, as a widow who's grieving, searching for a nice young man. I remember. So let's see here. It's 19, 1948 probably at this point. I'm gonna say she's not that old. She was born no. in 1905. No. Do you have pictures of her? I do. Oh, okay. I have lots of pictures of her I for you. I want to see these pictures. But I, you're right. I mean, people sometimes, I don't want to say that. And we have to remember the time. It's 1945, yeah. 1948. They're thinking these, these columns are honest. So she's presenting herself in a way that's... Okay. No, you're right. Very I guess misleading. if they feel like they're a match, they've been looking long enough. And, and she's a romantic. It, genuinely, I think she's looking for her knight in shining armor. Unfortunately, again, she finds out her third husband does not live up to her expectations. Another adulterous alcoholic. Hmm. This is a theme. It's a theme. These lonely hearts, guys. Ah. Maybe you should find something else, (laughs) Manny. So he was known for hanging out on the other side of town, in bars and often with sex workers. Nanny would disappear for months at this time during the marriage. But while home, she was the doting housewife. They would attend church services and town picnics together, and the community felt bad for Nanny. Okay. They always wondered if she knew what her husband was doing. And you can see that. So she she played the role Uh, well. Yeah. The marriage ended after two and a half years. In 1950, Lanning became very sick and died from a so-called heart attack. The side effect of the flu he was experiencing. Uh Uh-huh. Fever. Rat poison. Vomiting. Mm -hmm. Stomach pains. Doctors knew of his history of heavy drinking and felt his weakened body couldn't fight off the flu. Okay. So Lanning's home was left to his sister, not to Nanny. Oh, burn. But (laughs) it's funny (laughs) you say burn. The house burns down. Oh, Nanny's also an arsonist. (laughs) She just doesn't discriminate at this point. She uh, the funny will do thing anything. is, so, and this is another thing I read on the side. I didn't put in my story, but I have to tell. She actually has the TV with her when the house burns down because she's so obsessed with her romance shows, like her love shows. But she's saying that the TV, she was taking it in for repair. Oh, so she, she had, just so happened to be She just so happened repair. to take the one TV in the house for repair when the house burns down. Is that not funny? And all of her things. And all of her things. <laughs> um, Nanny moves in with her mother-in-law until she collects the insurance check from the home. And then she decides she needs to be with her sister, Debbie, who's dying from cancer. Right before Nanny leaves to be with her sister, you know it, the mother-in-law dies. Her sister <sighs> also dies shortly after being in Nanny's care. Wow. So now we're at two kids, two mother-in-laws, uh-huh. two husbands, two grandkids, and a sister. Well, she's just on a roll, and nobody's questioning, nobody's stopping anything. She's Nobody taking out anything. life insurance policies. So these Well, and husbands... back in the day, like you said, insurance companies probably didn't really look into a whole lot or talk no. to each other. So she could probably just walk into any random place and get a policy. Do whatever. And, and these husbands, too, were like, they, so it talks about, too, which I, I left out because I can't include everything. But the community showed up after Arlie Lanning's death and was like, we're so sorry, Nanny, you know, because he was a hard partier. Yeah. So 
and he was an adulterer, so they felt bad for her. So she oh. was the grieving widow. So not only did she get away with it, no one questioned her because they thought he was irresponsible. He didn't take care of himself. He died because he couldn't fight off the flu. I, I mean, mean, that's kind of like what she had casseroles for a month. She had didn't so deserve any of that. <laughs> Just don't eat like nanny's casserole. No, no. Enter husband number four. Okay. And Nanny decides she is going to step up her dating game, and she joins a singles club by the name of the Diamond Circle Club. Ooh, so do you have to pay that insurance money out to be a part <laughs> she of this? needed it. <laughs> My gosh, I hate to laugh, but whoa, Nanny. Uh, here she met her fourth husband, Richard Morton, of Emporia, Kansas. They marry in October of 1952 and stay in Kansas. He was not an alcoholic. Okay, what did he do? But he did love the ladies. Uh, okay. She discovered he was seeing an old girlfriend behind her back, and that pretty much sealed his fate. But before she could take care of him, she had to tend to her mother first, Louisa. Mm. Her mother moved in in January of 1953. She came to live with them after Nanny's father passed away. Louisa passed away within days of arriving after complaining of stomach pains. Okay. So she really didn't have a connection with anyone. No one. Her husband, Morton, he met his day. So this was a little, I read this differently in multiple places. Some say he died three days later. Some days, some say they died three months later. So, mm-hmm. Either or, he, Either he died. Way, he didn't make it. And yeah. he died of the same symptoms after drinking thermos, a coffee thermos prepared by Nanny. Okay. But what they didn't know is she already had her eye on husband number five. So now we're at two kids, two mother-in-laws, three husbands, two grandkids, a sister, and a mother. She's like, I'm not getting any younger. You only have one strike. You don't get three. Is this not insane? Oh, that's crazy. It's crazy. And I don't mean to joke like that because it's really awful. It's not funny. But this is kind of a long time ago in a a time where we didn't have the means that we do now. So it's just crazy that people were able to get away with what they were able. Husband number five. Right. I mean, it's just, wow. Yeah. She already had her eye on this guy. So she met Samuel Doss in Tulsa, Oklahoma in June of 1953. And there's a little bit of controversy about this. So he had lost his entire family in a tornado in Arkansas. Okay. He wasn't he wasn't like any of her other husbands. He was a Nazarene minister. Oh wow. Okay, so he was married and had kids and like his family. That's like his family of this. nine. Oh wow. Okay. And I think she saw him on TV. From what I understand, because you know she loved the TV. She lived through. Not real life nanny. She was obsessed with romance, right? So, so maybe just, she saw the news story and... and just fell right into yeah. this yeah. romantic. Well, he's very different than all of her other husbands. So. He is. So he was on the straight and narrow. He was frugal. He didn't give nanny much money. He disapproved of her romance novels and her TV love stories. He said, No TV. And I thought you would appreciate this. No fan. Oh, like, no fan. Sarah would do That's you like up. torture. <laughs> Sarah would be like, get out of my house. <laughs> or sneak for you. Um, and he even enforced a bedtime at dark. So he was just very regimented. And but here's Nanny's like a loose cannon. It's not going to work. But you don't regiment your wife or your... I mean, I could see being strict with your kids. Okay, no TV, no this, whatever, but... He, but I think as a minister, he probably represents a lifestyle. Okay, so he didn't want people to look at them and see, oh, I, okay, no, I guess you're like, marrying I him, you're marrying else. into his beliefs. And a certain his way and a certain look, but you know what? They didn't have social media back then. Let her watch nobody her stories. Knows, nobody knows when she's watching TV. <laughs> no. So this is she's just not going to work for Nanny, and she heads back to Alabama. To who? I'm not sure because there's nobody left. But she left him alive? She left him alive, and she goes back to Alabama. And she tells Samuel she will only return if her name is put on his bank account. Because he's very strict with money, so she's not allowed to have free reign of of his bank account. Well, he probably can't have a divorce under his belt. 
So, so he does as she says. Mm-hmm. And he adds her name to the bank account and she returns, but also taking out not one, but two life insurance policies with her as the sole beneficiary. Oh, look out, buddy. Look out. No, Samuel. No. By September, Samuel is admitted into the hospital with flu-like symptoms, a.k.a. Rat poisoning. Yeah. He was diagnosed with a digestive tract infection, treated and released. So I wonder, you probably can't taste this stuff. You must not be able to. I mean, if it's used in the right amount. I've never mm-hmm. dabbled in arsenic. I mean, not that I know. I'm not <laughs> no, looking into never, it. Don't, don't worry, worry honey. honey. <laughs> poison. Yeah. Um, that night, Nanny fixed him a nice home-cooked meal, and he died later. I read in different articles, because there's, there's so many. One said that he had enough arsenic to kill 40 horses. Oh, wow. But that oh, seemed to okay. like obnoxious so i don't know if that was it does seem especially when and there was, was no in, like doctor stating that right so i well but, and you wouldn't seem you wouldn't think he would be admitted and go through this whole flu like symptom he would just be d- dead well no this is when he came home oh, okay so okay. he came home he was released and then nanny was like i'm gonna take care of you i'm gonna make you this nice home-cooked meal okay so and after. then he died within hours okay I guess I misunderstood. I was thinking that he, and then he went, to, and he died at the hospital. No, okay. he came home. They well, were like, then... we made you better. And then he came home and died. So his doctors were alarmed. They thought he was on the up and up. And they asked for an autopsy. So this is the first guy who they couldn't simply say he lived a rough life, right? Because mm-hmm. everyone else was yeah. partiers and heart problems and this and that. And this was the first time it was very questionable. They're like, to what's everyone. going on? He yeah. went home and he was doing better. And this is also a time where you couldn't get an autopsy without a family's approval. Oh. And so, of course, she didn't approve. She does. She did? I don't know what if she's tired or if she thought they wouldn't find it. She approves. Maybe and then he gives him the romance novels. It happened and nobody found it in the autopsy. So she thought, I'm good. I can Or maybe stay. she. Thought maybe if she said no, it would raise a red flag. Maybe. So she's like, I'm just going to roll the dice and see yeah. how it goes. But unfortunately for Nanny, they discover his organs are filled with arsenic and she is the prime suspect. Mm, okay. And she's arrested. So her total is two kids, two mother-in-laws, four husbands, two grandkids, a sister, and a mother. Wow. And this is where she earns her name as the Giggling Granny. Nanny first refused to admit her role in Samuel's death. The police reminded her over and over that arsenic is not naturally found in food or drink. No. In fact, he just ate a full plate of your prunes before being hospitalized. Mm Mm-hmm. Did I read somewhere, though, that there's a small amount of it in, like, apple seeds? In apple juice, yeah. Apple juice. Yeah. I don't think it's, like... That's I mean, I'm not, like... This. Not this kind. Yeah, but yeah, not like this. Um, and they even asked her, "Were they poisoned?" She would giggle, giggle, and give a sheepish reply. I don't know what you're talking about. Me poison? Mm-hmm. She wow. would thumb through her romance magazine during interrogation and smile and laugh. Okay, I mean, she. Is... I have pictures. I can't wait to show you. Really? Pictures and pictures. She is laughing and smiling and giggling. And thumbing through her romance magazines. That was her one request. Do you think it was like a nervous, you know, some people can't stop laughing, laughing when they're nervous? Do you think it was that or do you think she just had, she was that cold and had zero remorse and just didn't care? Well, you tell me. I'm going to tell you more. Okay. So it took hours for her confession. And when she finally admitted to killing Samuel, she claimed he was just boring and a dud. And that's her reasoning. Okay. Police pressure her about the death of her prior husbands, and Nanny eventually confesses, but also giggles. If their ghosts are in this room, they're either drunk or sleeping. Hmm. Okay. Wow. I mean, she didn't. She just didn't think very much highly of any of them. No. They didn't, didn't. meet her expectations no. of her Romeo. Nanny confesses to killing four of her husbands, her mother, her sister, Debbie, her grandson, Robert, and her mother-in-law. One mother-in-law. 
She never confessed Lanning's to the baby. Mother. Okay. So then Tulsa authorities, they go to Kansas, North Carolina, and Alabama, and they exhume the bodies of her husband, her mother, her sister, um, her grandson, and her mother-in-law. Traces of ar- arsenic were found in almost every single one. It was found in all of her spouses and her mother, but in the others, asphyxiation. Okay. Okay. Did she talk about that at all? She does not talk about it, um, but they anticipate that she smothered them in their sleep. Right, with a pillow. She something. never confesses to the mur- murder of her two daughters, her first mother-in-law, or her granddaughter. Okay. I don't, it doesn't sound like they pressed her anymore. And so this is at a time where you could buy rat poison anywhere, right? Without any oh, question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that she did. She just bought that stuff up and kept it on hand for... She killed her loved ones with their favorite sweet desserts and drinks. Or sometimes like a homemade remedy, right? Here's some yeah. foods. You have a tummy ache. And they're filled with that person. Or chicken soup or coffee. That's just... Wow. The okay. state of Oklahoma only focused on the death and murder of Samuel Doss. The pro- prosecution found her men- mentally fit for trial. And she pled guilty on May 17th. 1955 and was sentenced to life imprisonment and from what i read her defense was they basically told her we got nothing she was giggling and laughing yeah the judge nobody found it was cute no no not at all i mean when you even if it's a nervous situation uh it makes me think of the video but i have pictures and she is full out smiling Okay. It's creepy. Okay. okay. It's creepy. I need to see it then. Yeah. yeah, they're bad. I'll pull them out. Um, so the state did not pursue the death penalty due to her gender, which I thought was very interesting because mm, it's it not is. very often there's female serial, serial killers. Mm-hmm. She was never charged with any of the other deaths, and she died actually after being in prison for eight years. Um, she died of leukemia in the hospital ward of the Oklahoma State Penitentiary in 1965. Okay. Some say the leukemia was caused because of her exposure to arsenic. Oh, okay. I didn't look into that side, but they were saying that much exposure to it can, can cause... cause that. I don't know if that's true or not. I didn't look into it, but that was something that they mentioned. Oh, well, it's interesting. So some blame the head trauma... For Nanny's murderous spree. But there's no denying that Maddie, Nanny was, she was a horrific murderer. Mm-hmm. Her, no. who seemed to entertain herself with her arrest. She laughed, she joked about her husband's death and the methods in which she used to kill them. She even offered to prepare her interrogating police officers a meal. Oh, stop it. Okay. That's just, uh, okay. That's just. So that's not a nervous laugh. No. That's, a, that's like a sassy crazy she's she's like i got away with this for so long i can't believe that you didn't catch me earlier yeah (sighs) so it's basically when one husband became too much or not what she wanted she killed him off and or anyone moved on to the anybody became too much of a hassle or she just didn't live up to her expectations they were and she got away with it for a long time because most of her husbands had underlying health issues or alcoholism heart conditions so no one ever questioned her everybody felt sorry for her so they didn't she was always the victim so her motive is a little bit different because it wasn't necessarily insurance money she did use that a couple of times but it was really just to find the perfect mate. And all in all, she was a hopeless romantic, and it drove her to kill. Well, and, you know, we all know that people that are into all of that, with the, with the that are hopeless romantics and reading the books and the movies, you, tip, well, you tell me one instance where the person they married or dated lived up to that character in a movie or a role the, they're made to be oh, perfect I'm and a say realist. the perfect we all thing know that I don't man. believe that but she was and it could have something to do obviously with her distorted I mean she didn't live a very good childhood yeah. and her expectations were really that was her out there right and she thought mm-hmm. she was one day she was gonna find it she didn't but one last interesting fact which I thought was just off the wall 
is that several days after Nanny was arrested, a, nan, a man by the name of John Keel from North Carolina reached out to police. He had been corresponding with Nanny after finding her in a Lonely Hearts column. Oh, and this is where they connect the dots with the Lonely Hearts column? No, this is just kind of, they all knew that they had met others through Lonely Hearts column. So after Samuel died and then, and I left a lot of this out because I only have so many minutes. (laughs) <laughs> but people started calling in and saying, that's funny. He died of the summer flu. He died of this. Her her second husband uh-huh. died of this. Her mom died of this. Her, her, you know. So people started calling in and was like, you need to check this out. And that's when they started, like, exhuming bodies okay. and okay. investigating a little bit more. But while, I mean, when she was in the process of poisoning Samuel, she was already talking to this guy, John Keel. So she had responded to Nanny's Lonely Hearts column. Well, she had to line them up. She didn't have a lot of time she, in between. She always had yeah. someone she had someone else. on the back burner. And she had told him she was a widow and she was looking with a good man to settle down with. And she actually sent him a cake. Oh. But he didn't eat it because it wasn't his favorite. Well, I doubt I doubt it was laced with anything at that point. Cause, no, but isn't that know? funny? Yes. So when we talked to her, and this is one thing that... Before I saw pictures of her, they call her the giggling granny. So I picture like this 80 year old lady all yeah, wrinkled up. Yeah, yeah. She's 50. No, she, you're right. When, when you said that and then we were going through the ages, I'm thinking, well, she wasn't really that old. She wasn't old. Mm-hmm. No. no. She was 50 when she got her sentencing. Okay. So happy birthday, Nanny Doss. Wow. Okay. So it was a little bit yeah. like more lighthearted. Hey, I mean, was, it still had some trigger warnings. Murder's right? never lighthearted, but... as we know. But, you know, as far as the things that we just talked about, this was a little bit, it was a different, it was a different handle, for sure. I tried. Yeah, no, you did good. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't actually know all of that information about her, but she did That's remind me. It's a lot me. of deaths. It's a lot of deaths. It's a lot. I mean, she reminded me a lot of... Of, you know, some of the other female serial, serial killers that we have talked about. Just with the poisoning. And well, and they the, don't have a lot of boundaries. Well, and I don't it, feel like they don't have a lot of boundaries. They'll take out anybody. Right. Well, I was going to say, it seemed like once they started, they got going, it, any, it, any anyone and everyone was fair game. Kids, mm-hmm. men, women. Mothers. Families. Grandmothers. Yeah, mothers, yeah anybody. Sisters, everybody. Yeah. Didn't matter. It's crazy. Yeah, so that's wow. my story. Okay, well, thank you. That's one way to start off November. Wow. And uh, kind of scares me about the whole bake sale thing. And <laughs> do we take food think. from the bake sale? Do we not? To think. We've bought things from the bake sale, and they actually, I'm really sorry, but they don't come in the house. Ah, uh, there you go. Okay. buy them, and then they just... Well, you just... The kids are real sad, but I'm like, we'll yeah. make you something else. Well, we always had a good excuse when Chase was allergic to peanuts, and he grew out of that. But I could say, oh, we don't know who touched this or where it, where it's been. Well, so. and now with COVID, there's not going to be another big sale no, for, it's... for centuries. So we're I think safe. For COVID, we're safe. We're good. We don't need to worry about that. <laughs> we can thank COVID for at least one thing in our lives. True story. Um, yeah, you know, one thing we forgot to do is flip the script. We promised we were going to try to do that to make things a little bit more lighthearted at the end of our episodes which I think some of these are definitely going to be needed do you have one I have I I have flipped the script it's a little bit probably not what everyone would be not the traditional flip the script but yeah so during my social media ventures in the past week (laughs) um I came across something happening locally called I think it's called tear of timber I I'm sorry if I get that wrong I was looking for some things to do with the kids that are a little festive. We don't have a lot of time. And obviously COVID has just put the damper on a lot of things. Mm -hmm, Unfortunately. We, um, with my work schedule and stuff, we were not able to make it to the pumpkin farm. And I found this, this haunted drive that you can do called Terror of Timber, like I said, I believe. Yeah, that sounds cool. And I was super excited. And then I read the reviews, which were horrible. And these people were mean and nasty. They just complained about how it was a long wait and it wasn't even scary and I blah, 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 blah. And they just went on and on and on and on. And at the very end, I, you know, it was one of those ones where you like, again, you go down the rabbit hole and I'm like, wow, is anyone going to say <laughs> something nice? And then at the very end was like a short little comment and the person was like, please remember, like this was our first weekend 
we're not, we had to change this from a walk to a drive through mm-hmm. due to COVID. Please remember this is ran by the Boy Scouts. Oh. Like, it was like, please give us grace. Please forgive us. We're not mm-hmm. trying to make, you know. Yeah. Well, they probably just didn't realize how many people were going to show up. Yeah. And, oh, Once again, okay. so all, but I'm thinking like we almost didn't go because mm-hmm. the first three of I thought, this is terrible. Long wait times, blah, blah, blah. And we went and it was so much fun and oh, it was a good. minimal wait time and it was worth every dollar to give to the boy scouts and you could they worked hard on this and i could not do any better myself so oh i love that i think that's a little bit of flip, that's flip good it, it counts and i'm gonna it go totally on there counts. thank you for reminding me and i'm gonna make a comment at the end that says yeah oh, you, you should, should give them a try because i think oh, it was should. worth every dollar the kids we had an absolute blast i would do it do again. you know how long it's running I think two more weeks. Well, maybe we'll try to get over there. Yeah. That's great. But yeah, put a and it comment the in there scouts, because so. then people will see that and they'll think, oh, it is, it, it did go well. And so, and there is a good comment because yeah. some people might be like you and think, I mean, oh, it's maybe the first we everything, go. right? Like with takeout when COVID first started and mm-hmm. all these restaurants trying to accommodate all these people sitting outside and we just need to give people some grace. It just everyone's yeah. so harsh these days. I agree. Anyways, what about you? You have any uh, anything for flip this script? Oh man, I really don't think I do. But well, does this count? They're not canceling Halloween. That counts. They're not, so yeah. that kind of counts. And um, I'm excited because I know that we've we've got some good plans for for our family to do some fun Halloween things together because we promised the kids, and they're really looking forward to making their. Haunted Halloween, you know, gingerbread, whatever, right? Yeah, they're like little, like, they're like graveyards or something Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, So that'll that'll be be fun. fun. And and it's on a Saturday, so we can start early, do dinner, and then we haven't decided yet whether or not we're going to let them trick-or-treat, but... But it's not canceled. It's not canceled. And it's not encouraged, but it's not canceled, and if we do end up doing it, I really thought those cool shoots people are making would be really so fun. fun don't you think the guys would have a blast they would like actually that? have a blast doing that to the kids like shooting yeah. them out like down like what if we made the a PVC really long pipes. one like practically the length of the driveway and like oh, the shot yeah. the kids would have fun doing that to other kids all we really have to do is present it as a challenge and the guys will be like did you just challenge me <laughs> and then they're gonna make like you this contraption make that yes. if they make something amazing we'll have to post a picture of it because i can see them really either really getting into it because they have the time or going Oh, I forgot. And then just taking a PVC pipe and, like, shooting it out at the children. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'll probably be half potato gun launcher by the time they're done. But right. everyone will get candy. Go three blocks away. <laughs> we are going to launch this into your you bucket. You get it in your pumpkin bucket. <laughs> the kids would probably think oh, that was that the most amazing, amazing thing yeah. ever. So, we probably shouldn't tell them that's an option. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Got a little we're carried away go. there, but we're super excited that Halloween is not canceled. Yeah, so it, hopefully that counts as a flip the script, right? Because everybody was worried that it was going to be canceled, and now you can kind of work your plans around what you feel comfortable with. Absolutely, because it's something to look forward yeah. to. Yeah. All right, well. Um... Yeah, other than that, hey, really quick, if we're continuing the happy, warm, and fuzzies, <laughs> if, you, if you still find it in your heart to give us grace and maybe hop on to uh, where you listen and give us five stars, uh, leave a review, even send us, send us something, send us an email, send us a note, hop onto Instagram or Facebook. And we would really love to hear from you. We really, really, we really would. I mean, we'd like yeah. to interact a little bit more. That's why we're making why the I'm effort. on social media. Yes, that's Help. why we're doing this. <laughs> we're not big fans of social media, but we're going to try for you But I, I do think we're going to enjoy engaging in our true crime family. Absolutely. So so yeah, if you think of it, that would be amazing. I know everybody is short on time, but it takes like two seconds to click that button. You don't have to leave a review, which is cool. So anyway, yes. And then I will be, I have no idea what I'm even going to do next time for mine, but I'm, I'm only going to allow myself an hour to come up with with something because you to know dis- how we can... to discover your story because then it's yeah. like another nine hours of oh, research yeah. to of talk research. for 20 minutes yeah it's enjoyable research but you yeah it just goes on and on and it on. does oh and then when we get off here i'll show you the pictures oh i can't wait to see next them. time you all can look them up we'll post what we can hop on and check it out because i'm interested to see what she looks like but until next time happy, happy halloween, halloween.